There are many legends and stories about the origins and development of tango. The favorite history of tango is that it started in the suburbs of the melting pot of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Tango is a dance, a music, and a poetry that originated in Buenos Aires at the turn of the century, about 1900. European and South American immigrants all brought their native music and dances with them. One of the earliest tangos was written around 1905 by Angel Velaldo. It was El Choclo, one tune almost everyone recognizes as tango. The word tango was used at the time to describe the various music and dances of the area. Buenos Aires was a very poor city with penniless immigrants coming to make their fortunes on the plains of Argentina and Uruguay. Those who failed ended up in the cities. Most of the immigrants were single men with nothing to their name but their macho pride, hoping to earn enough to return to Europe or to buy a bride from Europe. A poor, desperate male population bred crime, brothels, gangsters, and tango. With few women around, tango moved to where women could be found, the brothels. The women there could choose their clients by their dancing skill. The man had three dances to prove himself. With few women around, men learned together. It was not uncommon for men to dance with men, practicing their skills. This dance and music was popularized and moved up the social scale where it was embraced by the sons of the rich who were sent to Europe to study or do a grand tour. By 1910, the rich sons of Argentina made their way to Paris where society was eager for innovation and not adverse to the risque nature of tango. Polite society in Paris saw the dance and fell in love which let loose a tango mania. 1913 was the year of the tango, and tango became an international phenomenon. As it was now fashionable in Paris, the upper class of Argentina embraced it, and Hollywood glamorized the tango, with Rudolph Valentino as its most famous tango gaucho. Films, lyrics, and music developed and recordings were made. By the end of the First World War, Argentina was one of the richest countries in the world. Some of the most renowned tango recording artists of this early time included Carlos Gardel, who sang the tango stories of abandoned lovers, which became the story of tango. Notable dancers during this period included Petróleo, or Carlos Estevez, who got his nickname by being so slick on the dance floor. He would bend low at the knees and his footwork was characteristically fast. Others included Gerardo Portales, Jose Vasquez, Luis Lemos, Miguel Balmaceda, and Ramon Rivera. By 1930, however, tango was out of fashion in Europe and a military coup in Argentina suppressed and censored tango for 10 years. But tango flourished again in the 1940s, which developed into the golden age of tango. Tango came to be a fundamental expression of Argentine culture, and it was championed by the national political movement of Juan and Eva Perón, beginning in 1946. Tango changed with political and economic conditions, as evidenced in the music. In poor economic times, the large dance salons closed, giving way to the once popular smaller venues. Orchestras, too, became smaller again, and by the end of the 1950s, tango was again out of fashion. The arrival of American swing and rock and roll had taken over. Tango is really a passion play, and a tango dance ends quite often with a falling woman. In fact, the falling woman has become the popular icon of tango. It is the melodramatic portrayal of a fallen woman. Stories of tango can be about the lives of women who are fallen according to the morality of their societies. A great part of tango speaks of women who leave a man, often poor, for another man, in general of higher class.
and El Guapo takes revenge by killing the woman. According to the universal codes of love and betrayal, she must be thrown away. Tango's current popularity began in the 1980s when a popular stage show, Tango Argentino, toured the world, starring such dancers as Juan Carlos Copas and Maria Nieves. The newest surge in popularity began in 1990 with an explosion around the world. Most people see tango primarily as a dance, but getting to know and understand the music is part of knowing tango. The classic tango orchestra is made up of bandoneons, violins, piano, and string bass. The guitar is also a commonly included instrument, especially when a singer is present. The bandoneon is the key to the tango sound. It is a large, rather complicated concertina, originally developed in Germany for churches that could not afford organs. The bandoneon is a rather complex instrument, because most of the buttons produce a different note when played pushing in rather than pulling them out. Also, since the bandoneon is asymmetrical, the right and left-hand keyboards are different. It means that four different keyboard layouts must be learned. The bandoneon has become almost the symbol of tango. As the music developed, it became less rigidly rhythmic, more harmonic and melodic. Some people see tango as primarily a dance, a connection between two people in a beautiful pas de deux. Most will say, however, that tango is the music, the lyrics, and the dancer's interpretation of the music and the sentiments it expresses. Argentine tango music is much more varied than ballroom tango music. While Argentine tango dancing has historically been danced to tango music, in the 1990s, a younger generation of tango dancers began dancing tango steps to alternatives to tango music. In the 21st century, the new generation of musicians is mixing tango with contemporary music styles. This has been branded Tango Nuevo. Argentine tango is danced in an embrace that can vary from very open, in which the leader and follower connect at arm's length, to very closed, in which the connection is chest to chest, or anywhere in between. Three things happen as the tango dance begins. First, the man signals through his body that the first step is about to begin. Second, the lady responds with a move backwards, acknowledging her awareness of the move and making room for the man by starting a step backward. And third, the man senses the response of the lady and begins his first step forward. Tango dance is essentially walking with a partner in the music. Dancing appropriately to the emotion and speed of a tango is extremely important to dancing tango. A good dancer is one who transmits a feeling of the music to the partner, leading them effectively throughout the dance. Also, dancers generally keep their feet close to the floor as they walk, the ankles and knees brushing as one leg passes the other. Argentine tango is danced counterclockwise around the outside of the dance floor. A striking difference between Argentine tango and ballroom tango is in the shape and feel of the embrace. Ballroom technique dictates that the partners arch their upper bodies away from each other while maintaining contact at the hip. In Argentine tango, it is the opposite. The dancers' chests are closer to each other than are their hips. One very important characteristic of Argentine tango is the walk outside of the legs of the follower. This inside walk belongs originally to the American tango. It is seen in Argentine tango, but it does not belong to it originally. Argentine tango is not a set step, but a completely improvised dance comprised of various elements. Some elements include caminar or walk, cruce, cross, ochos, figure eight, ganchos, leg hooks, giros, turns, contrajiros, turns in the other direction, sacadas, displacements, boleos, 
llevadas de pie, moving foot by foot, cortes, cuts, and quebradas, breaks. Argentine tango developed a set of codes and superstitions throughout its history. One example is cabaceo, an eye invitation by a man to a woman to dance, which is practiced in Buenos Aires. The man raises an eyebrow or both. The woman accepts by smiling or nodding agreement. If the woman is not available or not interested, she averts her eyes as though she didn't see. Tango music is played in sets of three or four dances called tandas, and it is expected that one will dance the entire tanda with one's partner. Between tandas, a cortina is played. It is a short piece, about 30 seconds, and not tango music, to let the dancers know that the tanda is over. One tango superstition is that one does not dance to the well-known tango, Adios Muchachos, as it is believed to be the last song sung by Carlos Gardel before his death. There is nothing more tango than nylons. Sexy nylons lengthen the leg and are super soft to the touch. Also worn is fishnet stockings, almost a tango trademark. When tango was born, it was customary that women wore long skirts. As time went by, however, women began making openings in their skirts and dresses in order to have a wider range of motion. Today, it is customary to wear all lengths of skirts as long as movement is not impeded. Women tango dancers wear long skirts or dresses with long slits or really short skirts or dresses usually with asymmetrical hemlines adorned with fringes and crocheted applications. The tops normally show cleavage and are very sensual. Accessories can be worn on special occasions or for shows. This includes flowers made from fabric or feathers attached to the hair or legs. Tango shoes for women sport high heels with plenty of support and two straps, one from around the ankle and the other up the middle of the foot. For the men, a typical outfit is a silk shirt and straight-cut trousers. The man never wears cuff trousers, as it is too easy for a stiletto heel to get caught. The man can also wear suspenders, vests, and hats, all contributing to the tango image. Although the 1930s and 40s are often referred to as the golden age of tango, many see the modern resurgence as the new golden age of tango. As with tango itself, or how one interprets tango and its origins, when two people step into the embrace, a truly sensual experience begins, as tango is not just a dance.